you know? The first time you stand in front of such a colossus, you realize how tiny we actually are. I mean, I had studied the data, analyzed the satellite measurements, but nothing prepares you for standing next to a machine that's bigger than Cologne Cathedral. The first structure we studied, we called it the Harvester, was about 800 meters high. Imagine, 800 meters of pure, functional design. No embellishments, no aesthetics as we understand them, just sheer, brutal efficiency. What shocked me the most, the realization that this was not their home. These were tools, mining machines, terraforming units, planetary reshaping apparatuses. They dug up entire worlds like, like we dig up a garden. Material analysis revealed alloys that had to expand our periodic table. Superconducting compounds at room temperature, self-repairing metal structures, I'm a scientist, but there I felt like a Stone Age man seeing a computer for the first time. And then this silence, this absolute oppressive silence, as if the planet itself was holding its breath. The most fascinating thing was not her size, but her intelligence. These machines weren't just big, they were smart. Incredibly smart. We found energy signatures that indicate quantum entanglement on a macroscopic scale. The civilization didn't just understand quantum mechanics, they industrialized it. Imagine machines that can communicate instantaneously across light years. The energy distribution nodes Elena and I have spent days trying to understand even the basics. It's as if they're using space-time itself as a tool. We're talking about a civilization that could tap into black holes like we tap into hydropower. But do you know what kept me awake at night? The question, why are they gone? A species with such abilities doesn't just disappear unless, unless they ran into something even more powerful.